everybody. This is Android Faithful, where sometimes we're recorded, sometimes we're live, sometimes we bring you a little extra crack, crackle, snap, and pop. But we are here every week to bring you the latest news, apps, and hardware in the world of Android. I am Quinn Whitdow. Good to see you, Win. I'm Jason you. Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Michelle Ramon. And we're, Whew, it worked. It worked. And we're back, everybody. After we're, we're back. <laughs> after last week uh, being a little different with no live stream and um, Michelle and Jason and I being in New York with the awesome interview uh, uh, as it related. What, what were we even talking about? It totally spaced on what it was. Oh, it was Google, Google Play. Play. That's Google what it was. Play, yeah, with yeah. Sam. With Sam Bright. Yeah. And everything. <laughs> yeah, Sam Bright. <laughs> it's been a long week, everybody. It really has. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've been uh, you've you've uh, resided in three different cities. Oh my in the gosh. Past yeah. Week. No, yeah. I was traveling. Yeah. Confused. We we were all in New York together. We missed you in greatly, yeah, and we we had a great lunch. Uh, not to rub it in, and then uh, <laughs> and then I, I and then Michelle and Jason flew out of New York, and then I jumped in a car and drove to the Midwest, and then. <laughs> It was there until yesterday, so yeah, it's been it's been busy, that's for sure. So indeed, um, just hearing about it, but I know, but, yeah. but everyone all being together is great because uh, it is like ninety degrees in New York and hot, and lots of Android to talk about, and and I, I missed you all, so. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, it's great to be back because I haven't been on the show for a whole month. I know there was busy. Galaxy Unpacked, then there was the Xiaomi event in China. Yep. And then there was this Google Play event. So three weeks that I missed. So rank yeah, the events there, Michelle. If you had to rank them, what, what was the most? <laughs> don't, you don't have to. <laughs> it's like, do I have to really? really? <laughs> I got to imagine the China trip was probably the coolest. Yeah, I was going right? to say China. Yeah. 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 Uh, New York is New York, right? right. You, yeah. Once you've been there a couple of times, you've been there enough. Yeah. If you can make it there, they say. Uh, <laughs> no, but it, it was great actually nice. being in New York, though, and being at the Google event and seeing, you know, a lot of our peers, a lot of folks that we really like. And we had some great conversations and also just hearing just great, you know, appreciation and and, and love for what we do here on the show, uh, even at Google. Yeah, so yeah. many Googlers were like, came over and they're like, oh, I listen every Wednesday. I was like, oh, God, they listen. So <laughs> <laughs> yep. they listen or they tell us they listen. Yeah. Either way, I'll take it. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> All right. Well, before we get started, I just want to remind everybody in our listening and viewing audience um, and want to thank uh, live stream watcher Blind Android, who said, I've been encouraging some people on threads who have recently switched over to Android to come listen to the show. And not only do I nice. want to thank Blind Android for doing that, but remind everybody in the audience, the best thing you can do for us is tell a friend about the show. Um, mm -hmm. We're on every podcast platform, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Apple Podcasts, whatever. Uh, if you've got friends who are tech curious, tell them to come listen, please. It would be great. So just want to remind yeah. everybody about And that. they don't even need to be Android users. Yeah. Like we're, we're, it's cool. You use iOS. We welcome you. We've we actually gotten yeah. a lot of we feedback have, from yeah. iOS users. Who we have listen, iOS so. fam in the faithful. Yeah. So thank you for Absolutely us do. Too. We'll take it for sure. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Cool. And. Yeah, I think that's about it. AndroidFaithful.com. We'll just get that in there. Go there and uh, enjoy the things that you find there uh, because they're from all of us. Yes. And speaking of all of us, why don't we get into the news, all of us talking about it? Sounds good to me. We'll start with you, Michelle. That's right, Jason. So just earlier today, actually, um, a, a blog post was published on 9to5Google that highlighted the updated distribution statistics for the Android versions. So for those of you who don't know, inside Android Studio, which is a developer tool that is uh, you know used by developers like Win to make Android apps, Every day. you can see the distribution of various Android versions. And these numbers were updated, um, at least they say they were updated as of May 1st, 2024, but they were just published like a couple of days ago. So we don't have like the full updated, up-to-date statistics, but as of May 1st, we do have a couple of information, such as that Android 13 is the most popular version of Android at 20.9% of devices. That's a 6% increase since the last time the statistics were updated, which was in June 2023. Android 14, which is the most recent version of Android, is at 13% of all devices. Android 11 is um, now at 19% of all devices, and that was uh, previously at 23%. And Android 10 is now at 13.6% of all devices, whereas previously it was at 17.8%. So we're gradually seeing a shift towards a the more recent versions of Android, Android 13 and 14, and a decrease in the older versions of Android, although they're still pretty prevalent. 
like considering Android is installed, at least like Android with Google apps installed on literally billions of devices, you know, 13.6% of users running Android 10 is nothing to scoff at. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of mm-hmm. devices that, that are still running yep. those versions of Android. Which is so, why... So, yeah, if you're hoping for every user to be on Android 14 by now, that's going to take years. I was going to say, if, any, then, if anybody's... going to move on every year. If anybody's listening or watching and you are on an Android version that is below Android 14, write in and tell us why. <laughs> because the thing is, is that... You well, po- yeah, what is the reason you behind po- that? You yeah. potentially... I mean, I understand why. Like, it, we, In fact, we even got uh, an email. It's not on the show to, uh, today because it was just too short, um, but I could share it with everybody. We did get an email from, uh, from a listener who... It was a very short email from Craig who says... Um, my old Pixel 2 XL is still a nice phone with an okay battery. If it was updated to the latest OS, it would be great, right? And so if there, mm-hmm. if Craig is using a Pixel 2 XL, right, that's not getting the latest version of the operating system. So there it is. You know, there's some. If the phone is working for some people, not everybody's going to buy the latest device all the time, right? So. I think friend of the show, Chuki Chan, recently asked me just three months ago for a new phone recommendation. I gave her whatever, the Pixel 8. And before that, I, I swear she was using a Pixel 6 or Pixel 5. Maybe even yeah. Pixel 5. I was surprised. So, yeah, yeah, even someone who is an Android dev, sometimes we just like keeping phones. Yep. Okay. I have a question about these stats. Um, so I'm just kind of curious. We got Android 14, the most recent, 13%. 13, 20.9%, 11, 19%. All of those, you know, a little bit higher. Obviously, the 14 being at 13%, it's the newest one. It takes a while to roll out, so it makes sense that that would be lower. Why in between 13 and 11 is the 12 so much less? You know what I mean? The 12 and the 10 are kind of on the same same la- same level as far as the amount of install base. Was there something about 12 that didn't get as widely distributed or something about 13 that moved people off of 12 faster or more efficiently than normally? Like I, maybe we don't know the answer, but that's one thing that jumps out at me. Well, what so was it about 12? A- Android 12 came out on October 4th, 2021. Okay. Yeah. And Android 13 came out on August 15th, 2022. So it was less than a year of the window. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know exactly what was in each of those releases to make it such a, a big, yeah. a big deal, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's really an easy inference to make. It's just something that's kind of interesting to me. I, I would think that, you know, the older versions, it would start to taper off and it would be more or less kind of a gradual kind of curve down, but that's absolutely not the case here. It's like 12 is, well, so you know, 12 is a dip. Was okay. 12 Panini time? <laughs> Is there like an is there like a correlation with like people the dip in people buying phones? I don't know. Well, I mean, it was 2021, like 2021, so it was kind of you know a, a real a year that was definitely impacted by the spending habit changes that came that started the year before because that's, of COVID. That's a good point. Well, so you know, so maybe there's something to that. So according to Google's to the Android developers website, Android 12 was a, a new system UI with material U that's yeah, expressive, okay. dynamic, and personal. Extend your apps with widgets, app search, game mode, new codecs, support new protections like privacy dashboard, approximate location, improved productivity, rich content insertion, easier blurs, native debugging, and much more. So 12. Oh, and 12 will. 12 will look to be. And 12 will. Yeah, 12 had 12L. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. 12 12L. I doubt 12L is like even a fraction of a fraction. Yeah, it's probably, of a they probably just lump it in. I agree. Yeah. So then yeah. it'd probably just be lumped in. But so then, I, yeah, I, I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know why 12 point, is so then thir- a smaller amount of adoption. Thir- to 13. 13 was built built for 11, user privacy you know. and photo picker, picker and notification permission, improved productivity with themed app icons per app languages, clipboard preview, built mm. for modern standards like Bluetooth LE, mm. mini 2.0 over USB, better experience on tablets and large screens. So I think 12 was the bigger release basically. Mm-hmm. 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 It was, yeah. for sure. Fascinating. Yeah. Interesting. Like, I think it just probably boils down to probably the number of chipsets that launched with support for that version. Because, like, I'm guessing most of the devices that launch with the version, it's going to take some time for them to get updates. And, like, especially lower-end devices are probably yeah. still running the version of Android they ship with. Right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Probably right. there's more right. devices that ship with Android 13 versus ship with Android 12. Or even well, getting and, updates and, to Android 12. And, and on the other side of that is the Android 11, you know, which I think is kind of mm. one of the more peculiar 
you know, things. That's still riding high at, at 19% by comparison to that Android 12 number. But that would be a year prior, which would be peak COVID time. Yeah. Everything was thrown off. You know, maybe, yeah, there's, it's just an interesting correlation there. There, there must be some sort of connection mm -hmm. with that time frame and the upheaval that everybody saw, you know, in the hardware industry um, at that time. And yeah, it's just, it's just an interesting, interesting detail. Yeah. Wild. That's crazy. That Wild. Significant difference. All right. Well, so moving, <laughs> moving on in a different direction, we do like to highlight and call out when the companies, when the manufacturers do interesting ways to get the word out about Android. Uh -huh. And um, Samsung is the latest uh, kind of campaign we wanted to, to spotlight here um, as they've recently launched a ad campaign to celebrate the Galaxy Z Fold 6 and Galaxy Z Flip 6 um, in London. Uh, and this is where they're going to be reimagining <laughs> The, sh the street icons of London, like the red double-decker bus and the red phone, bo phone booth, which I think are gone from London still, um, all throughout the city uh, by giving folded versions of them. So if you're watching our video stream, uh, audio listeners, you can you, 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 what we're looking at is a, a red bus that is folded upwards – um, in like the shape of a backwards <laughs> L, um, which is wild, uh, a, a red telephone box that is folded, uh, in the, in this, in a similar, sh in a similar L shaped direction, uh, as well as a park bench and, uh, the iconic, uh, London, um, streetlights, uh, folded in a 90 degree angle. Um, they also, if you want to go experience this, if you are in London, uh, they took over old street station, uh, and actually re renamed the area fold street. <laughs> so if you want to oh, go geez. check this out, uh, um, but Hey, good on, I mean, I don't know why they did this, but it's cool. And, and, uh, it was done with a lot of local artists and, and other kind of artists who were, you know, kind of developing stuff, pretty cool kind of interpretation of what it's like to be folded. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I think they also did a the, the telephone know, this booth was like unrelated to this a different so, yeah. a little marketing campaign I think in Germany where they had like on the side of a building a massive fold six unfolding and it was like um, absurdly big and I'm like it was like almost obstructing traffic in a way I thought that was going to be what this article was about when I saw it in in the, in the show notes. <laughs> no. <laughs> cool. Oh boy. Samsung. Uh, I like it. They, they never go small. They go big. They crazy go big. Yeah. Yeah. And bendy. Yeah. And it's almost like, did they time it with the release of One UI 7 or what? I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I mean, the thing is like, okay, uh, th this, I, I would, I would, I would give them that this campaign of the bendy, the bendy London icons is pretty unique. Uh, but if we want to talk about One UI 7 and the things that are coming out, there are some things that are, we'll call them unique. And there are some things that are oddly familiar. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, I don't want to go, I don't want to be too harsh on Samsung, but, uh, we are getting some first looks at Samsung one UI seven, uh, which is coming out. And there, there are some things that I think people have noted, uh, your mileage might vary on this that seem a little bit iOS-y, but also kind of hyper, o uh, hyper OS-y as well. Uh, and it seems like Samsung is really kind of shifting a lot of their design language to, again, kind of take on some elements of Apple, as well as uh, Xia uh, Xiaomi. Um, so if you're on the video, you can see the setting screens, for example, and this just makes me sad a little bit because it really does look like an iOS settings. But there are a lot of changes, um, a lot of rounded corners. Um, gosh, the setting screen really looks iOS-y. Um, the chevrons, like the kind of uh, the, the, the very simple line uh back shapes uh the the widgets look more iOSy you know kind of rounded a little bit frosted glassy translucent um, and there are kind of like some more significant changes other than kind of like the more rounded uh, icons with the gradient shadows. Um, there's uh, actually they have their own version of the Dynamic Island coming out, which if you don't remember, the Dynamic Island was the iPhone 14 Max feature where they were trying to make use of the negative space around the camera and using that, you know, as a kind of like a pop out, like additional notification, -y, you know, kind of area. Well, Samsung is copying that and has a app. A app pill an app pill but more to the side <laughs> um we've got some very cut off not clear screenshots yeah. of it in this smart pricks uh is that smart pre smart pre sorry smart pre smart. <laughs> the other way didn't sound right smart pre article uh, yeah. which has some, sorry smart pre um so yeah uh again like you the dynamic app pill uh kind of again kind of it it, it, it kind of sort of it's a little different than the dynamic island because i think the dynamic island we all agree was a very interesting design you know, a uh, solution for wasted space. Whereas, you know, I, I guess yeah. it just seems like to kind of, you know, adding a, a similar UI feature. Um, the one 
the one UI 7.0 uh, camera app will have some updates. Um, they're going to add a feature called task continuity, which allows you to move calls from your phone to a tablet, which did, was that not a Pixel thing we were supposed to get, like for the Pixel tablet? Does, do you guys remember that? Like there was supposed to be a feature where you could start a call on your on your phone and then shift it over to Pixel tablet. Am I making that up? Yeah. No, no, it's not just Pixel tablet. They announced it, um, I think, last month. Okay. But it's already started to roll out. It's across device services. Okay. Uh, the exact name of the feature, I'm checking it on my phone right now. It's called call casting. Call casting. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Can, that's right. And only works at Google Meet right now. Okay, so it only works so at Google it's not Meet. That useful, but we don't know what this feature will work with. Yeah, like Samsung's version. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I, I believe um, iOS has a iOS slash Apple has a similar version, uh, presumably with FaceTime. Uh, I don't know. I'm not too familiar. Um, but yeah, a few other things. Um, something about storage sharing. Some storage sharing feature we don't have too many details on. Uh, and probably the most controversial is the changes to the notification panel. Uh, so traditionally on stock Android, we have the shade which has notifications, your quick setting tiles, and everything like that. Um, Samsung One UI 7 looks like it will be actually splitting the notifications from the quick settings. So you'll get two shades and you'll have to pull down from the left top, I think, and the right top, which is an iOS thing. I was playing around with iOS a couple weeks mm. ago. And and so your mileage might vary on that. Um, but I don't know. Reactions? Like, I, I, I'm i trying not to just, I, j just call it iOS-ness, but I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, there's, I'm going to take issue with the calling that status bar chip like a dynamic island clone. Yeah. Because if you recall, um, Google, when they released Android 12, they actually introduced a feature called like status bar chips where mm -hmm. you can show like ongoing information like um, the how long a call has been ongoing. And that's mm -hmm. what was released in Android 12. And that was released in late 2021, I believe. Whereas dynamic island only came out on the iPhone 14 Pro series in late 2022, if I recall. So technically, this is not even an iOS clone. And it's not even like Dynamic Island y because Dynamic Island is explicitly taking advantage of that pill shaped hole like, yeah. at the top of the iPhone, right? This is just right. a chip in the status bar. So I don't think it's fair to call it Dynamic Island clone. It's just like, I don't know why it's being referred to as that, but I guess it just draws some similarities to it. So people are calling it that. Is, and, is this white dot there? Is that meant to be like the camera uh, hole, like the front facing camera hole or no? It's no, 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 no. I so, think I mean, Samsung different. phones still have their, they have the, the, the hole punch cut out in the center, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. we don't really see. Uh, these are, these are some like a uh, uh, Bigfoot uh, style photos here. These, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like <laughs> these are real, like <laughs> hard to even know what's I will, exactly going potato on Yeah. Yeah. Potato. I will, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be a fan of the split notification shade. Like, that messes with my muscle memory so much. When yeah, I got totally. the, the Jami Mix flip and I talked about it last week, mm -hmm. one thing I didn't mention was how much that messed with me. Like every single time I get it wrong, I'm trying to pull down for the status bar to show my notifications. Every single time I always end up just pulling the wrong way or the wrong side. It's, it's going to mess with so many people who are transitioning from maybe a Pixel phone or something else or maybe even from an older Samsung phone to this version of One UI. So if you're transferring from an iOS phone. I really hope they give you the option yeah. to go back. Yeah, I was going to say, this being Samsung, I mean, Samsung does like to throw, you know, the bells and whistles in the kitchen sink in there. But uh, they often have a lot of settings around this stuff, too, you know. So hopefully yeah. so to go back to some sort of like legacy, because that would mess me up, too, having to know different zones to pull down on. a. Yeah. I, I guess that's one thing it. I like about One UI is that it is so intensely customizable that if you are a power user and you're okay with that, like, you know, with just multiple gestures and remembering all that and that's your thing, it's really awesome. I, I do generally have a problem with like over gesturification or just, the, just you overdoing like, it, period. Overdoing over gesturification. Over gesturification, where it's just, like, it's, I really feel like, especially for like, you know, not us, not us faithful enthusiasts, but like for regular people, it's just getting so confusing and just so. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't it know. It definitely <laughs> increases the gap and the divide going from that device to another device, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. 
So you, you have to learn a skill. It's it's like you 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 know what I mean. You're yeah. like you're learning a certain skill in order to operate that thing. My my wife still to this day she has the three button navigation down at the bottom of her Pixel. She prefers it. And if she picks up my phone, you know she'll she'll try for a second. She'll be like, yeah, just get it to the screen I need. You know, like it's a skill that <laughs> that it comes really easy to me because yeah. I use it all the time. But she just you know couldn't be bothered. And I think there's a lot of people that you know that fall in you know that what's category. so funny is that I was so remember Jason I was so adamant about keeping those three buttons at the bottom like I was in that camp I'm like I don't want this whatever yes I do and I do not know what phone like I got a pixel and it had gestures on default and I just went with it I guess at some point like I don't remember the moment I switched from the three button to gestures but now I now it's it's like second nature right yeah yeah, except to get to the except to get to the app picker that yes. one, that one, I strike out like three times every time. The, the when you long swipe from the bottom to get the little screenshots of every app you're using, I will yeah, pull oh, up the I, multitask. Yeah, I would the multitask. Yeah, I will pull up the yeah. app draw like three times before I get to that screen for whatever reason. I just quite don't well, ha- don't run, have that. Yeah, you can swipe up like normal. Just hold it there before letting yeah. your fingers. Go. I know, but I, I for do. whatever reason, I'm I, I'm holding it. Bef- like the the muscle memory isn't trained. Like I I think I'm holding it when I before I swipe. I don't know what it is, but it's yeah. And if yeah. you do that, then you're circle to search. Welcome right. to circle it's, to search. Oh yeah. So. Now, oh, by the way, ever since I got circle to search, I've been using it left and right. It is wonderful. Yay! I Isn't was. Great? Uh, we were trying. I was trying to figure out who somebody was, and I took a picture and I circled their face, and then and then it, it searched, and I, I found out who it was. So it was pretty cool. That so. is a human being. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it was. It was somebody notable. It was somebody notable. I'm like, I think I. What was that person in? And yeah. So <laughs> I, I will say real quick. This reminds me of a memory of like when gesture navigation first came out, and my mom unlike my dad, actually really liked her smartphone. Trying to explain to her gestures in Vietnamese, which by the way, I'm really bad at, was awful. Was awful because I think it was a little bit too complex for her English. And so I had a vision of my Vietnamese and it was, it was not good. It was, it was not good trying to Exam like can I explain it to Ron? Like you have to hold it, but just a little bit, and then pull up even for yeah. Anyway, right. <laughs> putting it into words uh, versus the felt sense of it, you know. See, it's, user experience a little yeah. too complicated. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. Too funny. Well, Samsung, you be you. Yeah, you be you. <laughs> you, you keep you being Samsung. Well, mm-hmm. and and just real quick before we move on, you know, because it came up time and time again throughout the, this conversation, the similarity of iOS or of Apple design and, and that sort of stuff. And I mean, we are at a time where the last batch of Samsung devices that they announced and released, there were a lot of people saying, "All right, there's there's a there's some serious Apple like influence going on here with the way that they're designing their hardware." So. You know, it's kind of always been there to a certain degree with Samsung. A little bit of that, you know, yep. kind of chasing chasing Apple to a certain degree. So I think you're probably right. Well, it is time to throw a huge thank you to those of you who support us on either Patreon, patreon.com slash Android Faithful, or support us as well on androidfaithful.com because you can support us by going to either of those places. But with uh, Patreon, we every week uh, put up a number of stories, three of them to be exact, for patrons to vote on uh, the story that they want us to talk about in our patron pick. And we also ask you for uh, some original art to submit with that. So I have here, let's see <laughs> yeah, here. The, the, the bug droid art uh, can be submitted by any listener uh, or viewer. You do not need to be a, uh, a patron, patron member. Um, and we've gotten, a, after a, two weeks ago when I asked for more submissions, we've gotten a bunch. So thank you everybody for sending them in uh, for sure. So Peter Keefe is the developer of the app planter which i'm pretty certain my wife has used on her plants uh outside so peter thank you for that um anyways peter submitted the the art that we have this week uh it's an interesting technique holding your microphone with the same hand that you're holding your script (laughs) leaving the other hand empty but hey, you know what? We all do uh, media differently. And I like I guess, that the bug so. droid is reporting the news from a submarine underwater. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's, it's a, a nice a, backdrop. There's a lot going on in there. It's clearly he's, <laughs> he's inside a water submersible to do the news, um, which is great. So <laughs> Love it. 
Thank you for sending that in, Peter. Thank you for all the art that y'all have been sending in. Keep it coming because we like to have this segment fueled with yeah. the art that you've created. So we had three stories up for vote. One ran away with it. The other two kind of tied, almost tied for second. Uh, at 22%, we had Epic pulls Fortnite from Samsung's App Store in protest of sideloading restrictions from Samsung's App Store. Keep that in mind. Uh, 27% Google Chrome could soon be less annoying when downloading APKs. I'll have to read that and see what that's all about because I have not read that story yet. But we aren't going to read that today because you voted 52% YouTube on Android getting a new mini player. So... If you are a fan of picture in picture, um, you were probably pretty happy, you know, a couple of years ago, at least here in the US, when YouTube basically gave picture in picture functionality to not just premium users as it was before, but any user for the most part. Um, but one place where you couldn't get picture in picture was in the app itself. If you're in the app, You've got the player up at the top, and then if you wanted to minimize that player, it goes down into this little mini bar down at the bottom. Uh, not the kind that serves alcohol, by the way. But uh, now, soon, according to uh, according to this uh, Android Police article, anyways, a picture in picture coming to the inside of the app in general. So when you're browsing YouTube, you can. You know, you can flick and fling and all that stuff with a little player and resize it and everything while you peruse the app. So there you go. Coming soon. Actually, Google has confirmed this, by the way. They confirmed, anyways, that they're doing a test. It's currently a testing uh, that they're doing. YouTube, so YouTube I don't, loves to do their tests. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So I don't yeah, know if that necessarily weeks, means actually. it's guaranteed. Well, they got to get well, they've been they, testing for, for weeks, actually, because like I got a couple of DMs on Twitter like, hey, I have this new UI. Yeah. Check it out. And then I guess just now some more people got it. Well, it's, it, they, they, uh, they've got to gather so enough data to make it a valuable yeah. test to understand it. I don't know. It's funny because it's like, I feel like this falls under the category of, it's cool that you can do this, but should you? You know, like, I, I don't, I, like, there's so much, uh, I mean, when you agree with me or? or no, no, I'm going to use it, Ron. Oh, I'm you sorry. Are? Okay, I, yeah. I, I, I want to know the overly... use case. Because here's the thing, a phone screen is only so big, right? And, and how much real estate am I losing? Like, I'm like, either watch it, like, or is our attention span so bad that we need to be able to be playing a video on our phone while doing something else on our phone? Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 The sad, answer is yes. Our attention is that affairs. bad. It's sad. So, so what I'm doing these days is I, I'm getting back into crochet because I'm making my niece toys. So I need to look at my crochet pattern. And then I'll have, I think I'm going through kitchen. Someone uploaded kitchen, Jordan Ramsey's kitchen nightmare. So I have to watch that in my picture in picture. So yes, this is, this feature is for me. Well, I mean, that's interesting. That's an interesting use case. I could also understand if you are <laughs> use case. Uh, w watching a video Video, if you're trying to do something and the video is explaining how to do it and it's on your phone, you want to be able yes. to still use your phone while you're seeing the video, mm -hmm. which kind of goes back to my whole thing. Like this happened over the weekend. I needed to, I, I, surprisingly, I, my friend had a rental car and we couldn't figure out how to get the back, the rear seats down because it was all, everything was all automated, but the buttons weren't working. And so I said, I Googled how to get seats down on a Ford, whatever. And you used to get a web page with instructions and now you now just you get, get videos. videos. And I'm standing yep. in the rain on the street in Indianapolis. I don't want to watch a video on how to do this because the video isn't informative. It's, hey, everybody, so today we're looking at the Ford, you know, and like, I got this. Like, no, just show me what button to press. Like, it's <laughs> drives me crazy. So I'm sure Fisher Fisher Well, then help you'll me probably want to be a. You'll want to be a Gemini subscriber, Ron, because coming soon is summaries for. Actually, I don't. I don't know if you need to pay for that feature, but they've talked about that feature summarizing yeah. YouTube videos. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, you know, that would see. be one use case for that. I don't know, picture, picture. But I guess picture, picture. A lot of people use YouTube for like sound, like eight-hour sound loops, you know, and like stuff like that. So if they're if they're using yeah. their phone and listening, they're listening to that. That I mean, or but if you're. But if it's picture picture inside of YouTube, that's 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 like the matrix. 
right? That's like, yeah. you're you looking, look. are you looking for the next video while yes. you're watching the first video? Well, yes, I am. Very yeah. excited yes, about I that. Am. I've done that yeah. in the last two weeks. Yes, I am. Do I have a short attention span? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the question is like, do you need to see the video when you're looking or, you know, cause right now you can look for your next video. It's just, it puts it down in that mini bar and all you get is like the, the thumbnail image. So yeah. you don't, you know, and I guess to that, it's kind of like, well, sure, it, it'd be nice to be able to see it. But you're right. There's only so much screen real estate. Maybe this is also on very a uh, more useful on a tablet. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you've got yeah. the tablet interface, yeah. having that picture in picture in the app becomes a little bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Makes makes more sense. All right. So cool. Anyways, thank you, patrons, for forcing us to talk about that story. That's right. You too can force us to talk about <laughs> stories. You just vote for it and we'll talk about it. Just like you can force yourself onto the show as a guest if you pay five hundred dollars <laughs> through the Patreon, patreon.com slash Android Faithful. No one's taken us up there, on that yet. But I'm someone, telling you. There was someone a couple of weeks ago in the live stream who's interested. I forget I forget their name, but if you were interested in being the patron of the month, you can you can still do it. It's open. Anybody can do it. So uh you know. <laughs> and then you can come on and you can say I forced Forced my way on Android Faithful. You know what? We welcomed you with open arms. Listen, it could be you, Sean Cavanaugh, Wild West Dan. It could be you, Daniel Carroll. You, Peter Giftos. Don't think I forgot about you. Or you, Ken Hayes, in the back. Yes, all five of you could force yourselves onto the show as guests. Five hundred dollars. That's all it costs. And I listen. We did that on my other podcast, I Fanboy, and it's happened a couple of times, and it has been a blast to have. Uh, audience members on the show. So listen, I, I think it would be a lot of make fun. a dream come true. I will say Wild West is very often in Twitch chat, so it would just be like an evolution of Wild Wild yeah. West Dan's Wild, participation. Wild West Dan is active on the Discord as well, which you get access to by signing up yes. on Patreon. So yes, indeed, some familiar names there. And I will say just real quick, Planter. Absolutely, my wife has used this app. Oh, wow, she that's has beautiful. used this app for her planner boxes. Very so, cool. So, Peter, good stuff. Peter, Peter Keith, awesome. Congratulations. Shoot, you got a good app. So, yeah, man. Yeah, looks yeah. good. Yeah, it's really well done. Cool. Great stuff. A lot of downloads, too. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty popular. Yeah. It's available in the Google Play Store. Planter, spelled exactly how you thought. It's not like P L A, that's P L A N T R. No, it's P L A N T E R. Well, you know, John, naming stuff is hard, and sometimes you got to stand up. But you're not Peter <laughs> sure. for, yeah. for remove the E, and you're a tech startup in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There you go, hundred mm-hmm. percent. All right, we got we got some a, a kick butt hardware section coming up here in a moment. Whoosh! It's time for some kick butt hardware. Starting with you, Michelle. What you got? Thanks, Jason. So I have actually only just in the past couple of days received the OnePlus Pad 2 that I covered on AndroidFaithful.com. So for those of you who don't know, this is a massive 12.1 inch super high resolution display tablet. I'm going to switch over to my. There you go. Can you see everyone see the? Yep. Oh, actually, no, you went, went over to the website. But yeah, do definitely check out that article if you want to see the full specs and the rundown of everything on this tab. I'm just going to talk about my brief hands-on experience with this device. Um, as you can see, this is a massive 12.1 inch um, LCD display. Obviously, you probably can't really tell it's LCD through the camera, but it is an LCD panel. Um, if you're hoping for an AMOLED panel, um, I'm sorry to disappoint you there, but I will say that text is pretty crisp because it's a, I think, 3K resolution display. Um, the colors are pretty natural. It's defaults in like its um, natural display mode. And it has a lot of great display features like adaptive tone and HDR support. And unlike the Pixel tablet, for example, this OnePlus Pad 2 supports up to 144 hertz refresh rate. So, you know, if you're using um, like a social media app or something, it'll like scroll through really smooth, nice and smooth. Um, I set it to the auto mode. So it scales between, I believe, uh, 60 to 144, depending on the app that I'm in. And it gets pretty bright. Obviously, I can't really show it here that effectively on camera, but in my experience, it gets plenty bright. Um, according to the spec sheet, it gets up to 900 nits of brightness. And for me, it's been great for reading um, manga and comics. Obviously, like in this portrait mode, it's much better to read like comics and watching videos in this uh, landscape mode because it's a pretty wide tablet. It's not like a three by two aspect ratio, like a Surface, for example, which would be great for 
um, productivity. Speaking of the rest of the device, it's a uh, pretty thin, but it's not light, I would say. I think it's pretty heavy, but it's kind of expected for a device with a 12.1 inch um, display. And speakers, it's kind of hard for me to test that here. Like, oh, you can hear our intro. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> it's a um, the speakers are pretty decent. I think it has a speak, six speaker system. And from the brief time I've used it to play music or like some relaxing sound in the background while I'm working, it's been pretty good. Um, I haven't had it long enough to assess the battery life, but it does have a 95 10 milliamp hour cell that recharges a 67 watt Super VOOC. And I have been able to test the performance a little bit. Like, it has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, so it kind of flies through any game or whatever task that you throw at it. Um, I played a little bit of Genshin Impact here. It's going to take a while for me to boot it up, so I'm not going to boot it up here. I did some retro console emulation, and all looked and played great. And because it's a Qualcomm device, um, you'll have a lot of great time playing like you know emulated games with it because of like the better driver support. Um, there is a stylus keyboard and folio accessory, which I do not have at the moment, so I can't really test this as a productivity device, only as a multimedia one. But for the few days that I've been able to test it, um, I did get to try out some of the cross-device connectivity features. So I'm just going to show some screenshots of that here because kind of setting that up is a little uh, bit of a hassle. So here you can see um, I have like this continue, this app continuity feature called App Relay. Um, where I, I opened Twitter on my phone and then it automatically popped up this little pop up here that asked me to continue using the app. So I could tap on that, then I had to tap a, like a little consent screen to screencast, and then I could browse Twitter from my phone, stream to my tablet. And it has a whole bunch of other features um, that you can stream. Uh, for example, if you get a phone call on your phone, you can answer it on your tablet. If you get text messages, you can answer it on your tablet. Um, if you disconnect your Wi-Fi, um, like if your tablet is no longer connected to a Wi-Fi network, but your phone is nearby, you can automatically hotspot from your phone to your tablet, which is also a feature that's now built into the cross-device services feature. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of other relay features. Oh, this one is cool. Like anytime you take a photo, you get a notification on your pad asking you whether or not you want to save and open it on your tablet. And a whole bunch of other stuff that's also kind of neat. Some of the stuff I can't test, like the NFC feature where you can tap your phone on the keyboard to transfer content. Uh, you have to have the keyboard for that. And it's also like a cross-device file syncing feature. I can't test that because I don't have Oxygen OS 14.1 on my phone. Um, you can also clipboard sync between your OnePlus phone and your tablet. And yeah, I, this feels like a really good tablet especially if you have a OnePlus phone like I do, the OnePlus Open. Um, I do have some gripes with it, but overall, I think it's a really good feature. And especially like I, when I get the tablet, uh, the tablet's keyboard, I'm really excited to try out the Open Canvas feature. So for those who don't know, this lets you split screen with, let's say, uh, here, the Gallery app. And then if I want to, let me sh show the taskbar, and then let's say Open YouTube Music here. I can have three apps side by side and I can like quickly switch between them and like this is something that they introduced um, with the OnePlus open but that has a 7.8 inch screen I think and this is a 12.1 inch screen so it's significantly more usable and useful I feel on this 12.1 inch screen Yeah, that, that open canvas stuff when the OnePlus Open came out, I was like, oh, this is very, very cool. And Michelle, my immediate thought was this would be a lot cooler if the screen was bigger, right? So yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see it, you know, kind of the dream coming to a reality there, I, uh, you know, in your hands on that tablet. So, Yeah, um, I think there's a couple other things I just want to quickly mention. Oh, one big thing is that there's no haptic motor on this tablet, which I guess, you know, is not, what? you're not really expecting... A tablet to have a great haptic motor, but, you get but it used doesn't to have it. a haptic motor at all. Right. So it's kind of huh. weird typing on it. I'm like, I have no haptic feedback at all. You notice like you're typing you're, you're typing like in 2011 or 2013 yeah. when we didn't have haptics on tablets, right? Yeah. So it's like <laughs> yeah. And also some apps like Reddit, for example, open in forced portrait mode. 
So mm, uh, you got to use a portrait that. mode. And there yeah. is a mode, there is a setting to actually um, force apps into landscape mode. There's only like four apps that are available to force into landscape mode, and Reddit isn't one of them. <laughs> and neither is like um, Threads, which is another app that opens in forced portrait mode. Yeah. Oh. I, oh. Wait, oh, it what? looked like it was gonna. When did that happen? Oh, look at hey. that. Oh, breaking news, everybody. The oh, hold on. Well, breaking news. I gotta, I gotta look into this. <laughs> the Threads app has been updated. <laughs> Threads app is updated. Wow, okay. You should post about uh, that so, on yeah. Threads, Michelle. <laughs> so. <laughs> so yeah, overall, thumbs up. This is a great value device. I believe it costs nice. like a little over $500 for just a tablet. And if you had bought this device when it was on pre-order... For I think four hundred and eighty-five dollars or something like that, you got not only the tablet, but also the keyboard and the stylus, which is That's an insane deal. deal. Yeah. Unfortunately, that bundle is no longer available, but they do have a couple of discounts. I did update the article earlier today that lists some of those um, deals that are available right now if you were to buy the tablet from OnePlus.com. They they also have the um, the trade in for any tablet, the same like crazy trade in yes. that they had with phones too, right? Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, you can use a really, really old tablet if you want to trade that in and get $50 off. Wow. But uh, some of the other ones are more worth looking into. Like, you can get 50% off the OnePlus Nord Buds 3 Pro if you buy the OnePlus Pad 2. Or you can get 30% off the new OnePlus Watch 2R if you get this tablet. So there's a couple of really nifty bundle deals that are going on right now on their official website. It will be sold through Amazon.com eventually. I don't know when. They didn't announce that. Yeah. But um, hopefully that's something we can link out to soon. I can tell you they got a real they got a real winner tagline going on with this with the one plus pad two life made smooth. Made I want smooth. my life to be smooth. I will say, speaking <laughs> of one one plus, um, I you know got we you know got my hands on the one plus watch two R. Um, showed on the show a couple other week and we praise the charger right the little charger puck you know it's so much mm-hmm. better. It's not better than the one plus. Uh, I mean than the pixel two because when you attach it you still can't the band still pushes the phone up. It doesn't. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like I still have to put the phone, uh, the watch upside down, which sideways. I'm afraid to do. Oh. Cause I don't want to scratch. The, oh, I put it sideways. Uh, yeah, yeah. You guys still got to do it sideways. So the puck is a little better than the pixel watch charger cable, yeah. but it's, it's not the, the panacea I hoped it would be. So, yeah. well, yeah, <laughs> well, so it you does can, that can you and that's catch? weird. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. The the detaching the cable. Attach that's the puck. You the, can just take the puck. Oh by yeah, itself, no, you just take the puck. Awesome. Yeah, but I mean, is that when you're when you are charging? There's no unique, not like there's no way to to plug a cable into the puck and charge the watch that feels natural. It mm-hmm. it always right. looks messy. Yes, like there yeah. is no like elegant yeah. Yeah. way to no. like charge yeah. that watch. It always looks messy on I, the desk. I've let watches totally hang weird. off like the side of the table, just so at least they're yeah. upright, and it's just. Yeah. But that's also a me problem. Sorry, guys. My, mind blowing. So <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. So uh, it seems like that's a good tablet. I do love a good tablet. I, I'm you know every year I say it's the year of the tablet, and I think with the uh, One Plus uh, Pad Two that might continue on. So um, <laughs> very cool. Well, so I got some hardware to show off too because if you remember nice. when we were last all together a couple of weeks ago, we we're all raving about the nothing CMF Phone One, and I asked everybody, should I get it? And well, I did. I pulled the trigger. Um, and I picked up the CMF phone one. Part of the reason why I was able to do it is because it costs less than $200. (laughs) It is so affordable. Um, unfortunately the orange color was sold out and I didn't want black. So I went with the, uh, the, the light greenish, uh, almost, um, uh, Jason, almost as a nod to my old next bit Robin, which is a similar color. Um, yeah, yeah. But, uh, green, it's like spearmint yeah. maybe or something um but yeah so i've been playing with the phone a little i gotta admit um the phone feel is fantastic um yeah, whatever material they used and it's plastic it's not you know metal or glass like it's some sort of um uh, it's very tactile it feels like it has a texture but it also looks flat when you do it um uh I got to admit in holding it, the little accessory nodule in the bottom corner, I still wish this was a dial. I just, I just wish that would be, I think that'd be so cool if if we had that. Um, but, uh, all in all, um, I think this is my new phone that I recommend people if they want a low end phone, a low price phone. Amazing. Because 
like, and I saw a bunch of articles that were talking about it where it's like, uh, this phone has no business being as good as it is for the, for the amount of money that it is. Um, and there are some trade-offs like it doesn't have NFC, right? So I can't, uh, you know, I've gotten used to using my phone and all that sort of stuff. So you wouldn't be able to pay to tap or, you know, use it in the subway or yeah. things like that. Um, but if that's not important to you, it, you know, I've played with it a little bit. Um, I haven't put it, really put it through the paces of like making it a my daily driver or you know using it that much. I've been using it on Wi-Fi, um, but it's been solid in terms of how it feels. Um, it when you installed it, um, it gave you the option to have it look like a nothing phone or look like a Google phone uh, in in terms of the UI. And so I went with the nothing mm. option because I wanted the true nothing experience. So all of the icons and all the widgets are all nothing fied and stuff like that. But if you don't care for the nothing design language you could set this up and have it look like a regular Android phone. And I thought that was a really nice kind of a nice added touch. Um, camera's pretty good. It's not great, but for a $200 phone, that's fine. You know, like, um, yeah. So first, you know, kind of first impressions and getting some time uh, with it to hold it in my hand. I'm really, really impressed by this phone. I think it, I think it's a, it's a winner at the low, like not even mid range, the low end price point. Um, it's, it's just really, really a really strong phone. So I'm glad I got it. It's going to be my backup in case anything goes wrong with my daily driver or hell, I might just switch to it. I haven't decided yet, but, um, uh, it's definitely a ton of fun. So, yeah, we're so used to in that, you know, $150, $200 range. If it's a phone in that range, we're so used to it just uh, like, especially from a design, like we know that the performance is going to be lagging in some way, shape or form. We know that the camera isn't going to be amazing, but we also, at least for myself, I also kind of usually assume that the design itself is going to feel cheap. And that's yeah. the thing that really jumped out at me when you showed this to me when we were in New York last week is this phone from a design perspective does not feel cheap at all. I mean that the camera bump has that kind of aluminum surround that uh, really contrasts so nicely with the plastic back and then also is ac accented by the uh, the screws that you see, the yeah. shiny screws that kind of tie into the metal, you know, surround on the camera. There's it's just it's a unique looking phone and it feels nice in your hand and yep. at least you get that for $200. It's going to make some other sacrifices, but at least you get that. It, it looks and feels very nice. Yeah. So I haven't spent on getting any accessories for it. I probably going to get another color back just to see what it's like to take the screws off and do that and, and, and do that whole kind of experience. Um, but I, I like it. I think it's a winner. Um, so if you're looking to recommend somebody for a, a low cost phone, $200, it's hard to beat that. So yeah. Yep. Holy so shoot. CMF phone won a winner. I wish that I could say the same about the CMF <laughs> watch Pro too. Yeah. I don't have a review ready for that yet, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's not going to be very pretty. When did you get the watch? I, I, I sent. I, sent I, the I got watch. the watch. I'm like at the buds. Yeah. Uh, the watch I didn't pull out yet yeah. because yeah. of Jason's um, difficulties with the bezel last week. But I did pull out the buds pro buds pro twos, and I do like them. I'm going to travel tomorrow uh, again, so I'm going to bring them with me. But I I really yeah. like them They're so great. far, and and the I buds actually, are excellent. Yeah, and I, I set up the case with the little rotating. I, I set up all the gestures in the case. So I'm kind of excited to try that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I might actually get the phone. I think it sounds like a really great option, especially the thing that caught me was like the ability to, be, to have stock Android or nothing like skin on the phone. That for some reason that's like incredibly compelling to me uh, that they give you options. So I love it. Yeah. Like it. yeah, it seems to be a nothing thing actually to give you the the opportunity yeah. to either do one way or the other. Which is great. Um, I, I that, love it. That's yeah. kind of how so, they roll. Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. So, and and like my whole thing, you guys like one of my favorite things is having a phone that doesn't look like every other phone. Right. And even that one definitely know, does not. And even when <sighs> even, sure. even when I got it, I just I got it, I unboxed it, I left it out. My wife stopped and was like, What is that? Like you got that kind of reaction, you know, nice. like, like, yeah. like, yeah. like that, like, is, and I was like, oh, it's another phone. It's like, oh, that's cool. And like, wanted to know what the screws are for and wanted to know what the, the not dial was for. And so like, yeah, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool approach. So I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> Good job. Nothing. It certainly the, I wish like it was a dial phone. Right. Michelle? It, like, me, it yeah. could be much more expensive. Yep. Totally. I do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, totally I just agree. bought one sitting here, Ron. Thanks to your hands-on. Wow! So like, yeah. God, wow! I should. I need a. I need an affiliate code. You know, Come on, jeez! <laughs> Bang! <laughs> Bang! That, that's. I, I. I just think, especially for dads, it's important to have kind of like a lower end phone to test on, and yep. and it's, there's not much sexier and cooler than you can get that. So shoot, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna show it off too. Awesome! Uh, cool! Nice! nice. Yeah. 
Well, if you have a budget a little bit bigger than $200 uh, and you cannot wait for Made by Google next month, which uh, I think some of us might be, I don't know. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, we're, we're well, all, you can't, we've said it already. We're all going to be there. I can't remember. It's we're been all a long going. week. We're, we're all gonna, going. Yeah, we're going to be there. Yeah, we're all going. Look, it's hard um, to keep all this stuff straight. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. Are we all going? Are we all going? So if you can't wait for us to go to Made by Google together and cover that and you just just you got you to know, well, guess what? You can know a lot of stuff about the upcoming Pixel 9 series, uh, all kinds of stuff. We got we got exclusives from Android Headlines, 91 Mobiles. Um, but you know what? The pank, the pank is going to be the thing because one thing that is very prominent in the leaked marketing pictures is that pink pank uh, Pixel 9. And it does seem to be that peony. Is it peony or is it coral? It's peony, right? It's peony. I believe it's called peony. No? We'll find out what it's called. We'll find out. Whatever. Uh, the pank one is definitely a highlight of the marketing materials. And not just that, but of course, it's 2024. It's Google. It's a phone. It's going to have Gemini. Um, and yes, it is. The Pixel 9 series is described as being designed for AI. Um, and a lot of the leaks have uh, kind of are kind of just showing a lot of the marketing materials kind of highlighting a lot of AI features. Um, for example, Magic Editor, which we already have, which is that, you know, um, computational photography feature that allows you kind of like resize and move things around. Well, now you're going to get even more AI-ness in your Magic Editor and you'll even be able to kind of give it prompts. And the example given in the marketing materials is reimagine this picture with a dramatic sunset as opposed to, I guess, you know, a daytime picture. So it's a not just boring you. sunset <laughs> in front of the ocean. <laughs> what would what would you what would Gemini give you if you asked it for a boring sunset? What would that be? <laughs> um, but yeah, really much right. more, you know, uh, and not to say that Magic Editor and kind of the other feature, which I think was announced like Add Me, which is a way of getting yourself into it's even it's, it's like is it even more than best take where you take the best take of a bunch of like, you know, maybe uh, slightly uh, several slightly good group pictures. If you miss the picture completely, there's going to be a feature at some point, add me, where you can just just add yourself in. Just don't even have to be there. Right. Um, so, and, and, and again, Magic Editor is kind of getting into that vein of like just really transforming pictures, um, philosophical discussion about what that means for pictures and reality in general, insert here. But that is something that is going to be unsurprisingly a highlight of Made by Google and the Pixel 9 series is... You know, again, computational photography and all these AI features backed by Gemini. Um, a lot of folks have mentioned Pixel screenshots, which is this idea that you take a screenshot and Pixel and Gemini rather will parse that picture. And if you say we're taking a screenshot of like a receipt or maybe just like a gift idea for a friend, you can even you can go ahead and ask Gemini, what was that idea I had or how much was this thing? Presumably, uh, we don't have too many examples yet, but the idea is that you can take the screenshot and Gemini does the work of parsing and remembering and being able to recall that later. And I say recall because a lot of people have pointed out that this is a not my wording, watered down lesser version of a canceled Microsoft feature called Recall, uh, which was supposed to feature on Snapdragon powered Windows PCs, but you might get a version on Pixels called Pixel Screenshots. Um, and yeah, but when it comes well, to, oh, sorry, go ahead. They didn't cancel Microsoft Recall, by the way. They okay. just delayed it and it's like being redone to be more secure. Oh, that should makes have sense. been the case from the get go. Okay. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Okay. So it's not canceled, just delayed and tightened up okay well you could get a version of it for pixels possibly on your pixel nines um but yeah uh, for the uh, for the phone itself unsurprisingly just like last year the big deal was the seven years of updates and so this pixel 9 series will also get uh seven years of uh both pixel drops feature drops and security updates uh so continuing that trend um something is let, let me let me just say real quick seven years ago was the pixel 2 we had an email earlier Right? Oh. Didn't we have someone in, earlier uh, in the episode uh, yep. talking about their Pixel oh, that's Two, true. and that seems ancient. Yep. So it's just it's interesting to kind of contextualize. Seven years ago, Pixel Two. That would be like someone rocking the, the Pixel Two still, which wow. apparently someone was. Someone is. Someone can, is. Keeping yeah. those the battery life. They, they, yeah. they wish the OS would update. So uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's see. So with your seven years of support, you can have, you know, your baseline Pixel Pro or sorry, baseline Pixel, but also now two uh, Pixel Pros this year. So we're going to have the Pixel Pro regular and a Pixel Pro XL. Uh, so for those of us who maybe have smaller hands and didn't want like 
a huge, huge flagship. Now there are options for you. Um, we There's camera specs out there. I mean, as usual, the Pixel 9 and Pixel 9 Pro will have really banging cameras. Pixel 9 Pro Fold, eh. Um, front cameras, eh, minus, except for the Pixel Pro Folds, will have really nice uh, 42 megapixel front cameras. But, I mean, really banging cameras. Um, the camera island design, so kind of moving away from the traditional, I guess now, traditional, now, old uh, camera bar that a lot of the Pixels has. The bar has, I guess, I don't know, like, uh, what do you call it when you, like, throw an anchor, lift it up anchor, and is the, the bar is now sailing away and become a little island in and of itself. So the bar <laughs> is no longer attached to the sides. That, was, a, that was a journey, win. <laughs> it was a journey. I don't know. It just, it just, it just, it just sail away. But yeah, it's an island now, and that is the design that's going to be. And yes, we have four colorways. Uh, I forget the... The fanciful names, but basically black, white, pink, and a gray uh, that are showing up in the marketing materials. But yeah, all four Pixel 9 series phones will be powered by the Tensor G4 chipset. Um, and the Pixel 9 sh- will ship with up to 12 gigabytes of RAM, Pixel 9 Pro, Pro XL, and Pro Fold. Hey, uh, we'll have up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. But yeah, I mean, nothing to anything, anything particularly st- jumping out at y'all. Um, that's interesting, not I'm, I'm interesting. Just, I'm just excited for the event itself because um, I'm a big fan of the uh, Google product folks explaining the Gemini uh, applications and doing the hypothetical situations. Like, let's say I want to go on vacation. Gemini, what should I – like, I love those uh, crafted moments. So I'm excited to see, <laughs> yes. I'm excited to yeah. see what we're going to get from this one. But, uh, but yeah. so I mean, <laughs> personally, oh, I'm excited for the Fold because yeah. year over year, that's going to be a – massive change compared yep. to the first gen be. pixel fold yep. like tensor g2 to tensor g4 um supposedly a, a much narrower cover screen but not anywhere near as narrow as like you know the galaxy fold, the right. fold. but yeah. the inner display is not going to be nearly as wide supposedly and much thinner hopefully lighter hopefully, i mean from these leaked photos you know, it looks thinner right we'll find out exactly yeah. how yeah. much but yeah so just overall, it seems like it's going, to be, it's going to be a massive improvement. Yeah. Oh, I did forget to mention that um, people, folks that are buying a Pixel 9, you will get a year of Gemini Advanced for free. Um, there's a few provisos that the offer will be valid for Pixel 9 series buyers who purchased the device before October 2025. It must be redeemed by mid-November 2025. But, That's- I mean, again... That's, that's a long time. That's, that's, a long that's time. like a whole that's year. That's like what they did with the Chromebooks. Yeah. Remember when we talked about the Chromebooks back yeah. in, uh, when was that, May or June? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, if you bought a new Chromebook, you get a year of Gemini Advanced. You know, they, they listen, they're, I mean, loss leader. They are, mm-hmm. they are trying to get people onto the, the Gemini platform any way they can. And by offering the subscription price for a year, that is just long enough for you to forget that A, you signed up for it, and B, that hopefully it becomes part of your workflow that you can't lose it. Like, right. That's really good yes, point. that's, Remember, that's Ron, the big yeah. bet right there. That Gemini mm-hmm. Advance is also paired with two terabytes of Google One. So right. hopefully in that year, you're taking enough, you're backing up enough stuff that yeah. you're you locking yourself in. You're kind of locked in, right? Yeah. Yes. You don't want to get rid of so stuff. So true. So <laughs> true. What are you going to do now? You're going to move it all off. You can delete all your Google's photos. No. Export tool, you know, like, yep. <laughs> which is just a pain in the butt to. I feel yeah, you got to feel at least a little shred of badness for a company like Google that has all the stuff ready to go. And like, I don't know if you saw the the, the promotional materials, you know, slideshow that I was showing yeah. just there as you were talking through yeah. all this stuff. But I mean, it's the full it's everything. You know, deal. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. literally everything. Potentially, there is we don't, no we, surprise. We, I mean, A, it's, not, it's a leak, so it's not confirmed. There might be some changes or there That's might be, true. There might be some stuff true. that we don't know about that isn't that wasn't included in all this. So it's like- I certainly hope so. Yeah. yeah. I'm still happy to make the trip. So. Out oh. to Mountain View to, to oh, see one hundred percent. Yeah, but I but I miss the days of the true surprises. Uh, yep. You know, yeah, and, oh, yeah. 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 I, I would like to. Well, this is why Apple never sends anything to retailers. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is and and that's and Michelle, that's a great point because this is the uphill battle that Google is the uphill climb that Google is doing because they're trying to get this in the hands of people and the best way to do that is to get it in the hands of the retailers to give them the materials to sell it but we live in a world that is as leaky as a sieve right and so yeah um, yep. it's, so they could they they could announce it and get a ton of press and then people go to their retailer and can't don't have any information because the retailers and don't have the, they, yeah you know, so it's a, it's definitely a chicken right. the egg issue here and like and the, the truth of the matter is is that all of us who care are reading this 
And the people who the normals out there who are going to, they don't they care. They don't care at all. all. You know, yeah. they're, they're going to yeah. on August 13th, their newsfeed is going to be filled with all these announcements and they're going to find out for this stuff for the first time. And sure, we could be like, yeah, or, we, we knew about it, but you know, who cares? Or they're going to go into their carrier the next time that they up their, their uh, plan and the, and the carrier is going to say, oh, hey, you're, you're due for a new phone. What do you, you want to check out the new pixel? Sure. What's on it? You know what yeah. I mean? Like. So many people just aren't even going to follow exactly. this stuff yeah, until yeah, suddenly yeah. they're in a position to gain something from it, you yeah. know, a new device. Yeah. So it it was so funny nice. because I'm so used to now after doing this with you guys for a couple three years and I kind of being on top of what things were. And one of my good friends posted a, one of the lead pictures of the Pixel Fold. I think it was one of the NCC listings. And he's like, what is this camera bump? And part of me was like, yeah, girl, we've known about that for like weeks now. Come on. <laughs> and, and Because I, I kind of forgot to get out of my like, you know, enthusiast, like news reporting bubbles. Like, oh, you're right. 100 percent right. A lot of uh -huh. people just just don't yep. just don't know so it will still be a surprise yeah. for yeah. the lay folks normal people exactly. non enthusiasts, normies <laughs> normies normies Apo well, apologies uh, if you hear squeaking my dog uh, apparently has a squeaker toy uh, and he's all the way over there and i can't reach it to get it out of his <laughs> mouth i don't know if you can hear any of that <laughs> what were you gonna say you know it's no longer a surprise to us techies what? what's that what another device that google is expected to launch next month <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, Jason. <laughs> yeah, just a, just a, yeah. But so okay, so a few more Pixel rumors, and then we'll move off the Pixel because at this point, I feel like well, there's one oh that God, I'm very very. So the, the last one is the one I'm very excited about. So let's let's. All right, so so couple more. One Android headline source tells uh, tells Android headlines. Uh, that the uh, more details about the Pixel Watch 3 essentially, and so you know, just to rattle off the gargantuan list of, of details that was shared Google's Actua display, capable of 2000 nits peak brightness, so really sounds like a major improvement for outdoor viewing, 20% faster charging on the 41 millimeter model. Which, yes, there are two models according to the leak. Uh, 41 millimeter, also a 45 millimeter model. So, um, you know, a lot of people felt like the the watch, the Pixel watches of the past were just too small for their wrist. Now they're going to get a little, a little bit of a larger uh, option. Nest doorbell camera preview, according to the leak, a morning brief feature that summarizes your health fitness. Actually, a lot seems like there's a lot of fitnessy related stuff. Uh, cardio load feature, um, using AI to kind of encapsulate um, and and analyze your workouts, create custom runs, uh, create custom workouts beat records, fitness insights, monitor your pacing, your cadence, your stride, all of this stuff that the watch, you know, really, I, I think largely, you know, a, a, a also a product of the Fitbit uh, integration, the Fitbit relationship um, that is present now that Google owns Fitbit, but a very big watch or a watch update uh, for the Pixel Watch series. Um, I think particularly so for fitness users, according to uh, these promo materials uh, in this article. Cool. Interesting stuff. But, and then... But what else, Jason? But what else? Possibly a new streamer. In fact, it would be called the Google TV streamer, according to 9to5Google sources. Which is both an uh, awful name and probably spot on. Yeah. With all the yeah. talk about streaming services and how many times you hear the word streaming. And so just go to the Google TV streamer. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> TV streamer. As you can see, not if you're watching the video version, not a dongle, but a set top or rather tabletop design kind of has a flat surface, which nine to five Google, um, uh, Abner Lee did did wonder like there was no com confirmation or, or guarantee of this, but did wonder if this might have something like UWC ultra wideband uh, connectivity so that you could do the tap to cast function uh, that was shown off. That'd be cool at some point. That was a total guess on his part, but uh, similar remote as before, a little bit longer, I'd say, but uh, definitely in the same vein as what we've seen on uh, their streamers in the past. Um, also, by the way, the device has hit the FCC, so uh, that's something. <laughs> I mean, that, <laughs> but they're that's pretty official. showing an Ethernet port as well. Yeah, yeah. totally. Once it's yeah. once yeah, it's it's showing up there. You know, there's something well, going on. I think it's worth noting that because it hit the FCC, you can tell that it supposedly doesn't support ultra wideband. Mm, so oh, that, I missed that. Yeah, okay. the ability to to tap the cast using ultra wideband 
wouldn't be possible since it's not certified to have ultra wideband. Oh, there you go. Dang, the that would be nice though to have something on yeah. on your phone and just go boop. But does the FCC listing say anything about an Ethernet port? Because if there, if, yes. the, if this is a if this does, is a set top, right it does. Great. If this is a set top box like the Nvidia Shield, I want an Ethernet port on this sucker. Um, that that's yeah. kind of what I'm thinking yeah. is that this is less of a kind of evolution. Uh, this is this is less the next Chromecast, even though it is. And this is more, God, he's just going to town on that toy. Uh, but it's more a, it, like uh, something to compete with something like the NVIDIA Shield. Yeah. Like my my NVIDIA Shield is definitely hitting the end. Like we're having, you know, regular issues with it where it locks up and I have to force a restart and stuff like that. I'd, I'd totally be game for this. Um, I guess the question is, you know, are we going to see something like this at MBG? I hope. Which is what I call it now. <laughs> MBG, not made by Google. It's It's MBG. So to give everyone a so. background, that someone on Google said, "Are you going to be at the MBG event?" And then we just we we ran with that. <laughs> we were because, like, "Wait, uh, what?" Um, oh, MBG. Oh, is that what you call it? Um, yes, of course. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I think it's, yeah. I think it's interesting because I think you hit. The, I think Google has likely, and this is speculation on my part, run into the physical limitations of a dongle device in that you can only yeah. fit so much in that device. And what is for you know, for years now, what has been my complaint about Chromecast or Google TV? It's the lack of memory and the lack of storage, mm -hmm. right? Ugh, which is because that yes. dongle is so small, right? So if you give yep. if you give me a little bit more of a set top box, which isn't that intrusive, you know, fits nicely, you know, sits nicely on the entertainment center below the TV in the demo lounge, right? Like it's like a perfectly you know uh, a curated space, right? But um, you know, not too much of a of a footprint, and with the size of memory and the size of storage, you can get probably a lot on there. There and then it becomes a more robust, you know, maybe maybe not as fully robust as an NVIDIA Shield with all the stuff that's packed in there, but more powerful than the dongle version of the Chromecast. I I, I will if they if this is at MBG and they will take my money at the event, I will give it to them. I want this. So yeah. now now since this is larger than the typical uh, dongle form factor mm -hmm. and seemingly you know does more has that Ethernet port has thread radios another part of the FCC uh, news. Uh, that hit on Friday. What do we? What would we think the price on something like this would be? Because the 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 dongle has always been really inexpensive. It's been like yeah. what, like forty five, forty nine dollars. Now, are we thinking ninety nine? Is that fair for something like this? Eighty bucks? No, no. So, it's it's definitely going to be like sixty nine, hundred and fifty, or something. Oh, you think? You think? Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. I mean, I mean, if you're putting it into the category of an Nvidia Shield, then yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the NVIDIA Shield right now, the NVIDIA Shield is selling, the NVIDIA Shield Pro is selling for $199. Um, yeah. Um, and they have the NVIDIA Shield TV streamer, which my husband just bought instead of waiting for, uh. MB, for waiting for MBG like I told him to. Um, <laughs> and that's like $150. Yeah. Um, so. um, is the streamer the tube? Yeah, that's the tube. Yeah. yeah that's so it's yeah. hanging out. So we don't actually have yeah. a media thing. We just have like it on right. the arm. So yeah. it, it's hanging back there for dear life. Now, that said, yeah. of if this leaked photo is real, I mean, yes, the remote is longer, but you know, put it up against the, the device itself is almost the size of the remote. It doesn't that's, look like it's a very a really big device point. either. Yeah. Um, I think. I mean, I think if yeah, they can get this, true. if they can get this at like ninety nine bucks, that you know, anywhere from sixty nine to ninety nine, that will be like it's a no brainer, like the Chromecast was. Yeah. Um, but Michelle, maybe you're right with a higher price point. We'll see. So. Uh, oh, I hope and so. that I, mean, I hope I'm not right. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, was our hardware block. Holy cow, was that almost an hour? Almost. <laughs> like we've been doing yeah. hardware yeah. forever. Yeah. Pretty dang long. <laughs> All right, we got to ramble through some apps here. We're, <laughs> we're pushing up against our time. But big surprise, it has to do with AI. <laughs> yep. Oh, Jason, you closed out on the... I guess we could skip it if you want to. No, no, we, 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 oh, we can do it. Yeah, we, uh, Google app can show contacts. Yeah. So very briefly, uh, as Oh, Jason I'm sorry, I didn't mean to link, close that out. Uh, Oh, there we um, go. According to a teardown by Android Authority, the Google apps are preparing to show contacts and device settings in the search bar. So for those of you who have a Pixel phone, the search bar on that device is kind of like a universal search experience. It can search through all your apps, your settings, your contacts, etc. But the search bar within the Google app um, can only show the names of your installed apps when you're searching. But soon... The folks at Android Authority have discovered that there will be a toggle that allow you to opt in to showing your matching contacts and even some system device settings when you're doing a search in the Google app. So basically bringing it more in line with the universal search experience on Pixel phones, but 
within the Google app, which is available on all Android devices. Mm. Cool. Very nice. Integration. Integration, indeed. Um, well, going on for even more talk about integration, um, uh, another APK, APK teardown over to Android Authority of the Google app uh, showed some uh, integrations and hooks and basically in the form of extensions that might make Gemini be able to work uh, in a better way with your device. Um, the extensions in the APK teardown that they found uh, that have been unannounced so far include um, Home, uh, Google Home, the phone app. Um, a phone focused one called utilities, as well as Google keep task and calendar, um, which Google had confirmed that would be coming soon. Um, unknown of when these are rolling out, but basically these will enable Gemini to access these apps and interact with them a little better. Um, you know, I know one of our big complaints about Gemini is that it can't run my, my tasks, my Google home automations or, you know, you know, things like that. Hopefully this is a step in the direction of get making Gemini a little more integrated with the services that you use already on your phone. So, Oh boy. I hope so. Yep. Yeah. We will see. It's really needed. Necessary. Yeah. And one more win. And one more. So if you are a Windows user and um, you want to be able to wirelessly um, be able to view a, your phone's files on your Windows PC, you are one step closer to that. Um, of course, you can do that already now, like view uh, phone files on your Windows PC. I've done it a couple of times, but it's not easy physically, you know, connecting the phone, using MTP, mounting and all that kind of stuff. But if you happen to be using the Link to Windows app uh, on your phone, uh, which requires Android 11 or higher, and you need version 1.2407. One plus. Wow, my brain just did not want to read numbers for a second there. Uh, and your PC is running any Windows 11 Insider build. You can go ahead and go to your Windows settings, Bluetooth and devices, mobile devices, and turn that on. And you'll be able to wirelessly connect uh, and connect your Android phone to your Windows PC and look at files um, and manage files. Now, there are some issues. It's a beta. Um, there's some issues with deleting. There's some issues with, you know, file operations done on the computer syncing back to your device. So uh, caveat testor, not mTOR. Is it mTOR? Caveat mTOR? Caveat testor? Caveat. That Caveat Empor. Empor, Emtor, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Caveat to the te tester. Yeah. Um, but if you are a Windows user uh, and want to be able to kind of get a look at your Android phone files, you can start yeah. doing that. Very nice. And after you, Michelle. Go ahead, Ron. No. I was going to say one more thing. Go for it. Go. I wanted to highlight the thing that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. <clears throat> so I did an article the other day on Android Authority about this really neat app that um, can help reduce motion sickness if you're sitting in, if you're a passenger in a moving vehicle. So if you suffer from that, you know, issue while using your phone, you can't use your phone when you're in a car, this app on the Google Play Store, and Jason, I put the link in the private chat, it's the very top, and um, right. this, it's in the private chat if you just scroll up. Yep. There you go. So this app on the Google Play Store is called Kine stop, kind stop. I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but basically it does the same thing as that new feature in iOS 18 called vehicle motion cues. It basically puts a bunch of dots on your screen and it uses your phone sensors to track the movement of the vehicle and syncs the movement of those dots with the vehicle movement. And what this does is basically it tricks your brain into thinking your phone is moving um, the same direction and velocity as your car, which is what causes motion sickness to begin with, this disconnect between your phone being static in your hand and your ears, you know, feeling that you're moving, right? You're moving like really fast, but your phone isn't actually moving in your hand. So it kind of fixes this by putting these dots on the screen so you can comfortably use your phone as you're sitting in a vehicle. And I've tested this and it actually works really well. Like um, the couple of times that I took like a, when I parked my car at the airport and I get on the bus to go to the airport that they have the shuttles, it's like a super, super bumpy ride. I just could not use my phone at all during those like the brief couple of minute ride between the airport and the parking. But when I turn this on and use my phone, I'm actually able to use my phone pretty comfortably, like with no issues. So I highly recommend you check this out if you experience motion sickness while using your phone in a car. Cool. Good, good, nice. good one. And to it's recommend. free. It's free to download. So there's no there's no payment or anything. Even better. It's totally free. Um, very cool. And so before we move on to email, uh, going back to hardware real quickly, the Nvidia Shield came out in 2015 and the latest mm -hmm. version came out in 2019. 
and they yeah. have not updated it or lowered the price since then. I find that amazing. Like that Why is did my husband buy that. That because they kept on updating the software and oh yeah, the yeah. software has been updated. Yeah, it's but great. The, yeah, yeah, but I mean, but just the, they, yeah. they haven't iterated on the hardware. Yeah, they haven't iterated on the hardware right? at all. Yeah. And it's like, and yeah. and for some reason, it just keeps selling. And it's like, I, I just find that amazing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's yeah. been a, a yeah, it's been yeah. totally dependable and everything. And it's I, it's only really for us. It's only been in the last like I'd say you know probably three or four months where. Suddenly we have, we find we have to you know kind of unplug it and replug it yeah. uh, in every once in a while. You and know? I, I will say for humor's sake because I wanted I was I was curious if there's any sales data of how many they sold. There's not, but I, I I did Google how many Nvidia Shields have sold, and in the people also ask question box, the first question <laughs> the first question is what is so special about the Nvidia Shield. <laughs> which I find very funny because <laughs> clearly people have been like, what's the deal with this device? <laughs> so Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, good on you, NVIDIA. Well, that's actually a really good transition to our first email. So, <laughs> Yeah, and Ron, if you don't mind controlling that, because sure, yeah, uh, yep. I, I got yep. a weird uh, opposite screen thing. Um, all right, so contact at androidfaithful.com is where you can write us if you want to... Uh, take part in our show like jonathan from vermont says hello crew long time watcher beta episode of triple a beta episode oh gee several time commenter responding to ron's hesitation to purchase another google tv device in the last episode um, this is actually episode 52, I think is the yep. episode that it was in. I have owned several different Google and Android TV boxes, dongles, models, Nexus player, had that me boxes, Google Chromecast with Google TV for almost all of these devices. I have had, uh, to have added a hub for wired network connection and additional storage. I recently bought an on and on 4k pro and I like it a lot. It is faster and smoother than anything I've had in the past. The 32 gigs of storage makes it so much better to use. No need to add a hub. The addition of the Google Assistant speaker is a nice touch. The only thing I have run into that has been an issue is while you can cast to it, you cannot add it to a speaker group like you can with the Google Chromecast with Google TV dongle. While I've never bought an NVIDIA Shield, I feel for $50, I would not hesitate to purchase another on and on 4K Pro or recommend it to somebody else. So there you go. So just for those who aren't aware, the on and on and it's it's actually uh, O N N, uh, and this is yeah, the, the on. Yeah, this is the device that Walmart produces and sells. Um, and hey, man, if if it's in stock, which I think it is right now, for fifty bucks, go grab it because we've I, the, uh, Jonathan's comments echo everything I've heard about all the on and on TV devices. Um, they also have a stick. Uh, that is ridiculously cheap and functional and great. Um, so good, good on good on Anana for doing such a good job uh, with their media devices. So that's wild. The dog was barking because it wants it wants this the device. Device. Like, I want that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is what happens when I do a podcast downstairs. Yep. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it. Shall we go to the next email? When? Yes, we should. And this email comes all the way from Tasmania, Australia. Uh, hello, all, and thank you for keeping the team working for all Android lovers. Our pleasure. I have a question that you may have covered in the dis distant past, but is new with every iteration. What features am I giving up if I pair the Samsung Ultra Watch to my Pixel 6? The Samsung Ultra is the first Android watch that is interesting to me. The Google Watch has never interested me as it looks like a toy swatch watch. I don't want a watch I have to fuss about getting wet, etc. I'm more focused on fitness and don't want to use Samsung Pay. Not looking at a Samsung phone either. Been a Nexus and Pixel 2 for six users for many years. Didn't get the 8 as I spent money towards a birthday trip to Oaxaca in November last year. Lol. That's awesome. That's a good choice. <laughs> looking at the Pixel 9 this year, Darren, Tasmania, Australia. Um, that is a good question. It's a great question. So what so, so what happens? Traditionally, I don't know specifically about the Galaxy Watch Ultra, what features would be missing if you pair it with a non-Samsung phone, but traditionally, um, a lot of the Samsung health monitor features, like ECG and blood pressure monitoring, are only available if you pair it to a Samsung phone. Although there are modded versions of that app that you can get, and I have tried uh, to enable those features on non-Samsung devices. Um, Samsung camera controls, like the ability to use your watch, I believe, as a viewfinder and a shutter, 
that only works, I think, if you have a Samsung phone, which makes sense because it kind of pairs with the Samsung camera app. And then the ability to sync do not disturb mode, I believe that's also generally only available if you use both Samsung devices. Um, there might be other things that are exclusive, um, like some Galaxy AI features maybe, but I don't know for sure. All right. So it all depends on what's important to you. If you just want the phone paired to your watch, if you want the watch paired to your phone, be able to tell time, yeah. use apps, it's fine. If you want to use yeah. the bells and whistles, you might your, your mileage may vary. Right? Yeah, and I guess it depends so, yeah, on how you, deep You it definitely will you know. get the best experience yeah. pairing it with a Samsung device because they have so many first-party apps that yeah. kind of rely on you having another device with access to those apps. Yep. Mm -hmm. Samsung definitely, you know, that's another, you know, the theme that on this show, you know, Samsung and it's kind of Apple, I don't want to say envy, but definitely an emulation of kind of the approach of Apple as well, that, that kind of ecosystem play. And part of that is, you know, building apps and features that play really well with its own devices in ways that it doesn't with others. It's just kind of part of how Samsung does it. Well, you, it's not just them. You know, you saw earlier in the show when I did my hands-on with the OnePlus Pad 2, a lot of the yeah, features totally. are, yeah, it yeah. definitely works really well if you have a OnePlus phone. Like, there's For so sure. much synergy between them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I to mean, be fair, that's also easier, too, to, like, yeah. if everything is, in the, is under the same umbrella and the same company, that is the yeah. easiest and most efficient way to make those features work, so... All right. To be fair, to be sure. fair, and they're all just trying to build their ecosystem, right? They all just want to want, want to lock you in, right? So, mm -hmm. yep, so. cool. All right, well, thank you everybody who wrote into us. You can email us at contact at androidfaithful.com. We love hearing from you. Please write in your emails. Fuel the discussion. So, if you have a question Indeed. or comment or response, or do we get anything wrong, let us know at contact at androidfaithful.com. And we love to know where you're coming from. I think Tasmania, Australia. I, have we had? I mean, we know we've had Australians, but I just always mm -hmm. like it when friends from. Much further reaches. We're actually pretty big in Australia, to be honest with you. We are. Yeah. I think, oh, that's I think well. We're, I think that that's safe to say that we are. I'm gonna pull up. The, I did not know that. I'm gonna pull up Hello, the data, but uh, I'm pretty sure we are. <laughs> uh, if I can pass this captcha, uh, then I can. Do it. <laughs> so, um, Which will be hard because you're not actually a human. You're Gemini. Right. I, I am a robot. Yeah. That's what people don't realize. Yeah. I'm actually powered by Gemini. I know, but um, yeah, no. We, I mean, we've got friends in Australia, right? Uh, we Jason? do. We've got, you know, we've got, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and a yeah, lot of yeah. listeners. And yeah. um, here, looking by location, um, it looks as if uh, Australia is actually our fourth largest downloads country. It's the United States, the UK, Canada, Australia. So, wow, there it is. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Be happy. It's wonderful. Representing wonderful. Eh, a little more than five percent of our audience. So well, it's still pretty good. Still good pretty good. Good job, Australia. We yeah. love you. So we love you, and we love being together. We got the band back together, and that is it for this show, for this episode of Android Faithful. In this band, I th is it true that we only have one true musician, and that would be Jason? Is that fair? Is it is Jason the musician? Am, between I, am I the only? Musician. I mean, I, I'm not. Musician. I can press play on a, a <laughs> tape, CD, record player, if that counts. <laughs> Yeah, sure, that counts. Have you ever sung in the shower? No. Okay. <laughs> no? No. No, okay, well then you're yeah, you're not okay, a well, true musician. I want to call I Jason or Google musician. AI to make me songs. I've done that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that counts. There that you counts. go. And that is something that you, I believe Jason Howe talks about uh, on other things he does. Jason, what else do you do that people yeah. should know about? That's true. Uh, well, youtube.com slash at Texploder is a great place to go. I have been playing around with um, with different AI systems, Udio and Suno. Actually, the last couple of weeks, I've done a bunch of kind of live streams and, and testing them. And it's been a lot of fun to kind of getting to know like what these things are capable of. If you're not a musician, you can type in words and then come up with songs or you can use it for your so for the music that you actually make you know there's a lot of different ways so go to youtube.com slash at textbloater for that and so many other things the ai inside podcast the textbloater podcast and pretty much everything i'm doing funnels through that channel in one way shape or form so that's where you go oh my gosh i gotta tune in for when you talk to a friend of the show mateo doni uh haven't seen mateo yes. in a while that's so exciting oh my gosh yeah gonna gonna have him on the the text Loader podcast on thursday yeah i saw him while i was in italy and it was just great to kind of see a different side of him showing me his home you know his home turf and everything and oh, i was beautiful. like i gotta get him on cool. we gotta talk about his his origin story Mm. Well, someone else who has been globe trotting, globe hopping, plane hopping has been Michelle. Michelle, it's good to have you back. What do you want people to know of the many things that you are doing? 
Well, if you want to follow me, I haven't been posting about Android 15 lately, and I apologize for that. But it's not because I don't have things to post about. In fact, my backlog of Android 15 content, I think, is like 20 posts long. And I've just been going through some of my other stuff so that I can get to that content and actually, you know, iron it out, hammer it, hammer it out before MBG next month. <laughs> um, so if you want to support my work so that I can get to that content and, you know, actually pump it out as soon as possible... You can go to patreon.com slash Michelle Ramon. You can uh, join and support me for minimum $3 a month. You can get access to the Discord community where I frequently talk about and tease some of the stuff that I'm working on. So if you want to see some of the upcoming features in Android 15, before I even publish an article on them, you can go there. And feel free to ask me questions anytime. Like I'm always chatting frequently with everyone else in there about Android, about Pixel stuff. Um, there's a lot of cool folks there that you might recognize in the community, especially if you love to follow tech news. So, uh, yeah, patreon.com slash Jean Ramon. Beautiful. Uh, Michelle is definitely huge in Android as we're huge. I mean, probably more huge than we are in Austin than we are in Australia. <laughs> um, but and and of, and according to iFanboy, we are just the premier source of uh, Android news. And That's iFanboy true. is, of course, something that is a Ron, a, a Ron Richards special. Ron, what else do you got going? <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, no, uh, you can go listen to my brothers over at ifanboy.com, talk about comics, and every month I pop in there talk about movies. Um, but talk about movies, um, I'm going to plug something I didn't work on, but actually a friend of mine worked on. Um, this past weekend, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, film premiere of the movie The Duel, um, which was in Indianapolis because it was filmed there, uh, starring, um, uh, oh, what is it, uh, Dylan Sprouse, uh, from the sweet life of Zach and Cody from the Disney channel. You might remember him, um, as well as in, uh, Jason, if you cycle through the photos for our video viewers, you can see, um, I know it's hard to see it's white on white, uh, but move one more. Uh, the, the talented, uh, Patrick Warburton is in the film as well. He might recognize from Seinfeld. Um, got to hang out with him. He's, he's an awesome dude. Um, the movie opens tomorrow, July 31st. And uh, that's me and Connor for my fanboy there. Um, uh, but yeah, the movie, uh, opens tomorrow in, th uh, in theaters. Uh, so definitely go check it out. I give it two thumbs up. Um, really exciting. It's a fun, uh, fun, sat uh, black comedy satire. Um, if you go to my, uh, Instagram account, uh, Instagram.com slash Ronick. So you can see the photos I was just mentioning there as well as the movie poster and my kind of mini review. Uh, but go check it out. Leave a review of it on Letterboxd. Um, my friend produced it. Uh, very proud of him. So uh, yeah, go check out The Duel. So. Beautiful. Um, yeah. I, I live a slightly less glamorous life than Ron is recently, but I am an Android developer, which is <laughs> it's a glamour in and of itself. Uh, and I do occasionally speak about Android things. Um, so if you want to find... My talks, you can go to my website, randomlytyping.com. Uh, code, associated video code, and other things are there. And find me on Instagram at Queen Code Monkey and at Queen Code Monkey at androiddev.social. Uh, it's a long one. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for us this week. This podcast publishes every Tuesday evening. And don't forget to check out androidfaithful.com, our very own website where you can subscribe, see articles written by all of us. Uh, and yeah, we're available on all of your favorite podcatchers and on YouTube. But yeah, that's it for this week. Um, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. <laughs>